Welcome to the Voice of the Victim podcast. My name's Ryan, and unfortunately, I'm here by myself tonight. Rosie's had a crazy busy week, and she's been really sick. Don't worry, it's not the big C, but we're actually revisiting a case that we've talked about in the past, the Larry Nassar case, because there's been a recent update from one of the victims, Michaela Maroney. There was a Senate hearing on September 15th, 2021, where she gave an opening statement talking about kind of a rough experience she had after she came forward to the FBI. And so I wanted to watch that tonight and just kind of discuss it. Again, I wish Rosie could be here for this, but we're going to make it work. So thank you for understanding. I appreciate it. Rosie appreciates it, and uh, I've put a little thumbnail of her in as a substitute, so (laughs) I can pretend she's here. Anyway, let's watch this opening statement from Michaela Maroney. Good morning. Thank you, Chairman Durbin, Ranking Member Grassley, and members of the Judiciary Committee for inviting me to speak today. As most of you are probably aware, I was molested by the U.S. Gymnastics National Team and Olympic Team Dr. Larry Nassar. And in actuality, he turned out to be more of a pedophile than he was a doctor. What I'm trying to bring to your attention today is something incredibly disturbing and illegal. After telling my entire story of abuse to the FBI in the summer of 2015, not only did the FBI not report my abuse, but when they eventually documented my report 17 months later, they made entirely false claims about what I said. Okay, let's just stop it right there. So that's terrible enough that 17 months passed before they even documented it. She reported this back in 2015. But Michaela Maroney, just to bring you up to speed on her story, she was an Olympic gold medalist from the time she was 13 back in 2008. Larry Nasser was her doctor and... Well, you know what he did to these young girls. Now, this continued till 2016. In 2015, she just said is when she came out about it and told the FBI. But let's hear more from Michaela herself. After reading the Office of Inspector General's OIG report, I was shocked and deeply disappointed at this narrative they chose to fabricate. They chose to lie about what I said and protect a serial child molester rather than protect not only me, but countless others. My story is one in which special agent in charge, Jay Abbott and his subordinates did not want you to hear. And it's time that I tell you. This is a huge problem, especially with people who have an unusual amount of power. Being able to just sweep something like this under the rug. The fact that the FBI didn't act on this right away is really scary. In the summer of 2015, like I said, I was scheduled to speak to the FBI about my abuse with Larry Nassar over the phone. I was too sick to go meet with anyone in person, and talking about this abuse would give me PTSD for days. But I chose to speak about it to try and make a difference and protect others. I remember sitting on my bedroom floor for nearly three hours as I told them what happened to me. I hadn't even told my own mother about these facts, but I thought as uncomfortable and as hard as it was to tell my story, I was gonna make a difference and hopefully protecting others from the same abuse. I answered all of their questions honestly and clearly, and I disclosed all of my molestations I had endured by NASAR to them in extreme detail. They told me to start from the beginning. I told them about the sport of gymnastics, how you make the national team, and how I came to meet Larry Nassar when I was 13 at a Texas camp. This is what makes this situation even more sad, is how difficult it was for her to actually come forward. She wasn't even able to talk to her mom about it, and she made this effort to relive her experiences, to tell someone about it because she thought it would make a difference. I told him that the first thing Larry Nassar ever said to me was to change into shorts with no underwear because that would make it easier for him to work on me. And within minutes, he had his fingers in my vagina. The FBI then immediately asked, did he insert his fingers into your rectum? I said, no, he never did. They asked if he used gloves. I said, no, he never did. They asked if this treatment ever helped me. I said, no. It never did. What? This treatment was 100% abuse and never gave me any relief. 
How do any of those questions aid in the investigation? <sighs> I then told the FBI about Tokyo the day he gave me a sleeping pill for the plane ride to then work on me later that night. That evening, I was naked, completely alone, with him on top of me, molesting me for hours. This is part of the story that I don't think we even talked about last time we covered this. This was a while ago that we covered this case, but maybe we talked about these specific details, but I don't think I remember that. Told them I thought I was going to die that night because there was no way that he would let me go, but he did. I told them I walked the halls of Tokyo Hotel at 2 a.m. at only 15 years old. I began crying at the memory over the phone and there was just dead silence. I was so shocked at the agent's silence and disregard for my trauma. After that minute of silence, he asked, is that all? Those words in itself was one of the worst moments of this entire process for me. Just minimizing To have my experience. abuse be minimized and disregarded by the people who were supposed to protect me just to feel like my abuse was not enough. But the truth is my abuse was enough and they wanted to cover it up. USA Gymnastics in, in concert with the FBI and the Olympic Committee were working together to conceal that Larry Nassar was a predator. I then proceeded to tell them about London and how he'd signed me up last on his sheet so he could molest me for hours twice a day. I told him, I told them how he molested me right before I won my team gold medal. How he gave me presents, bought me caramel macchiatos and bread when I was hungry. I even sent them screenshots of Nassar's last text to me, which was, Michaela, I love how you see the world with rose-colored glasses. I hope you continue to do so. This was very clear cookie cutter pedophilia and abuse. And this is important because I told the FBI all of this and they chose to falsify my report and to not only minimize my abuse, but silence me yet again. I thought given the severity of this situation, that they would act quickly for the sake of protecting other girls. But instead, it took them 14 months to report anything when Larry Nassar, in my opinion, should have been in jail that day. The FBI, USOC, and USAG sat idly by as dozens of girls and women continued to be molested by Larry Nassar. She's so right. So many people had to live through his disgusting habits because they didn't act right away. Like she said, he should have been thrown into jail right away and started to be investigated. But instead, they just sat on this information and... How many other girls did he get to because of that? According to the OIG report, about 14 months after I disclosed my abuse to the FBI, nearly a year and a half later, the FBI agent who interviewed me in 2015 decided to write down my statement, a statement that the OIG report determined to be materially false. Let's be honest. By not taking immediate action from my report, they allowed a child molester to go free for more than a year. And this inaction directly allowed Nassar's abuse to continue. What is the point of reporting abuse if our own FBI agents are going to take it upon themselves to bury that report in a drawer? They had legal legitimate evidence of child abuse and did nothing. If they're not going to protect me, I want to know who are they trying to protect? What's even more upsetting to me is that we, now, we know that these FBI agents have committed an obvious crime. They falsified my statement, and that is illegal in itself. Yet no recourse has been taken against them. The Department of Justice refused to prosecute these individuals. Why? <sighs> Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco couldn't even bring herself to be here today. And it is the Department of Justice's job to hold them accountable. I am tired of waiting for people to do the right thing because my abuse was enough and we deserve justice. These individuals clearly violated policies and were negligent in ex executing their duties. And in doing so, more girls were abused by Larry Nassar for over a year. 
To not indict these agents is a disservice to me and my teammates. It is a disservice to the system which was built to protect all of us from abuse. It was a disservice to every victim who suffered needlessly at the hands of Larry Nassar after I spoke up. Why are public servants whose job is to protect getting away with this? This is not justice. Enough is enough. Today, I ask you all to hear my voice. I ask you, please do all that is in your power to ensure that these individuals are held responsible and accountable for ignoring my initial report, for lying about my initial report, and for covering up for a child molester. In closing, I would like to ex express my deep gratitude to the United States Senate, a very powerful institution that from the very beginning has fought for us rather than against us. Thank you, and I welcome any questions. That's good to hear that the Senate has been supportive at least, but that's a scary thing. These huge, powerful organizations like the FBI, who's going to hold them accountable? Like, they're the ones that do the investigating. They're the ones that we're supposed to be able to rely on to balance the scales of justice and for them to enable these people in power to get away with stuff like this instead of having equal justice for everyone. It's super obvious, first of all, because if this would have been a normal person, he would have been behind bars that night. But second of all, where's the Department of Justice on this one? Like, she's pleading for their help, but how are they not acting on this? Well, I guess it's probably because the FBI is so powerful. The same reason the FBI didn't act on investigating Larry Nasser at first is because they don't want to investigate another powerful organization like the FBI. They don't want to jump through all those hoops because, you know, the FBI, they want to keep their credibility. They don't want to admit that something like this slipped through the cracks, something like this happened. And uh, it would be scary as a... DOJ agent to go up against that as well. So it's just, it's a really sad cycle, sad situation. Because like she said several times, he was allowed to walk free after she came forward, after she told her story, and he was allowed to go then practice on hundreds of other girls probably. I mean, ugh. it's just enraging and sickening. Makes my head hurt. Thankfully, now, Nasser is in prison. In December of 2017, he was sentenced to 60 years. But how many other girls suffered because of the negligence? It's terrifying. And to be honest, I'm even scared to upload this because I'm a nobody. I'm just talking on this podcast, and what I'm saying isn't favorable towards the FBI. But like she said, if they're not held accountable for stuff like this when it happens just straight up negligence that leads to more crimes then there's no incentive for them to stop doing it there's no incentive for, incentive for them to stop covering things up because there's no consequences there's no repercussions for it and that can only lead to corruption there's no other destination when there's no accountability besides corruption <sighs> anyway this is a short episode because, again, we don't have Rosie this week, but I just wanted to highlight this statement from Michaela Maroney and make sure all of our listeners are aware of it. And Zucchini, do you want to say hi? He's been a little chatty during this episode. Do you want to say hi? You don't even know where the camera is, do you? He's feeling a little lovey right now. Anyway, that's where I'm going to wrap it up. Um... <laughs> Thank you for understanding that Rosie can't be here this week. Send her your love if you want. She's been pretty sick this week. And uh, yeah, thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next time.